All right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, episode number 1162. Yes, there we are. And we are coming to you in the month of November, the year 2022. And as I'm speaking the words into this microphone, the jury is still out as to whether or not we're going to save this nation from the corrupt, the criminal cabal in Washington, D.C., and the criminal cabals that are in many uh, state capitals. Uh, It's still out. Um, I I guess the the only thing I've got to say to you people out there in, in America, now, if you're listening somewhere else, just you know, eat some popcorn and watch what's going on is, uh, eventually we, we get the, the government that we deserve. And sometimes what we deserve, uh, is not, you know, it's like, there's a difference between, um, want and deserve. We don't necessarily get the government that we want, but we get the government we deserve because we misbehave or we just, uh, well, we, we punt and we allow other people to make decisions for us because it's hard, like making your own decisions. It's hard taking care of yourself. And it's, you know, what if I fail or what if I don't succeed or what if it's difficult? Wouldn't it be better if we just let somebody else do it for me? Yeah, exactly. All right. I, I guess that um, I'm, I'm going to talk about, not I guess, I am going to do it. I'm going to talk about two things. Number one, uh, I posted on our socialist media account this weekend. There is a trailer, which I still can't figure out. I can't figure out um, how a you trailer? watch a trailer. It's, they call it a trailer, right? It's a trailer. It's not a preview, but you watch it before you watch the movie. So before you watch the main movie, they show you a trailer. Now, in my mind, a trailer is something that follows behind. I thought it used to be like that. Yeah, they used to call them previews, and now Hollywood decided, no, they're not previews, they're trailers. What do they trail? What do they trail behind? I don't freaking know. But I digress. Uh, Peter Billingsley has produced a Christmas story, uh, a Christmas story Christmas. I have an answer. What? Most film historians, this is just from Google, by the way. Okay, Google. Most film historians, but it sounds right. It sounds like it could totally be true. Most, most film historians contend that at some point in the late 1930s, theaters began showing movie trailers before the feature film rather than afterwards, most likely because serial-style films were on their way out and patrons often left the theater immediately following the film. Right. That makes perfect sense. Right. Uh, it's as simple as that. I thought maybe there was like something in more of a meaning to it or whatever but i was thinking too far so they were calling them trailers way back when yeah when they actually were after the movie so it's kind of like rewind Mm. when you're making the video go backwards what the hell are you winding back in the old days it used to be a vhs tape you were rewinding the tape but nowadays it's just a term that we use yep so long story short a christmas story christmas is the new movie uh and it's got the original guys Flick and Ralphie and uh, Schwartz, and uh, of course, uh, they're, they're apparently they're going to be cameos by uh, Scott Farkas, the bully, and and so on and so forth. And so Ralphie's all grown up, and he's got kids, and uh, they go back to they go back to the original house. And where is the original house? Well, the original house is in Cleveland, Ohio. And it is called a Christmas story house. It's not a house in the middle of the woods. No, it's not in the middle of the woods. It's in town. Uh, and you can go to a Christmas story house.com and uh, you can find it. We, we were there way back when, when they open. we were there for an, we were there for inaugural weekend or opening weekend. You guys remember that, right? Uh, yep. Yes, so the Markle family, we were there for the opening weekend of A Christmas Story House, thanks to Nancy Markle, who found out about it and bought us tickets. We got VIP tickets. Oh, we did, yeah. We got the VIP tickets. We went and we stayed at the hotel where the crew stayed during filming in 1983. Uh, We got a special gift basket with all kinds of Christmas story uh, goodies, including a decoder pin and Life Boy soap and 
Uh, I've got a leg lamp coffee mug that I still have from there and uh, uh, a red T-shirt. The red T-shirt I still have. Uh, Christmas Story T-shirt. And, and I still have the signed Red Rider BB gun. That's right, Zach. We took the, the ice- original cast. No, not all of the original cast, but many of the original cast were there. Um, the uh, the teacher, Mrs. Shields, and uh, Scott Farkas and his little toady were there, and uh, Flick was there, and the little brother, Randy, he was there, and the two elves, the two Christmas story, the elves from Higby's, uh, they're all grown-up adults and stuff, but uh, they were there. Uh, and they were all really cool. They posed for pictures, and uh, they signed uh, the Scut Farkas, the bully. Did Flick sign it too? Did he sign your BB gun? I have no idea. It, ha- it has not come out of the uh, the bag in a, it, since we a, since we moved to Mississippi. It's in a rust proof bag. It's in a yep. Yeah, Good it's in a storage in. bag. So we should probably ta- I should probably take that out of the bag at some point. And I have a piece of the original house. I have oh, yeah. an actual piece of the original house of the siding, because when they the the guy bought it, the guy who owns it now, uh, when he bought that, it was in essentially a state of disrepair. It just looked like an old crappy house somewhere in Cleveland, and he put a bunch of money into it and he restored it so that it looks today like it looked then. Uh, it, it looks like. You know the the Christmas Story house, and I watched the uh, the trailer preview for a Christmas Story house. And if you, well, look at the poster, Jared. If you look at the poster, there's Ralphie, and he's standing in front of that house. Yep. In in Cleveland, which looks exactly That's like so the cool. house. That is so cool. I'm I, so glad that somebody that was a Christmas Story fan bought that house. Oh, I know that. I mean, it just it made my heart feel good. They've got a leg lamp in the in the front window, uh, and it's 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 awesome. It's just I, fantastic. I, almost, I can't guarantee this, but I presume that the house being in its original condition probably has something to do with the uh, the sequel being able to be done so easily well and and not only that but i i believe that the the well the the hollywood people the producers and directors and stuff they had you know they had to say well do people do the people of america even want this do they want to see another you know another christmas story movie and i can only imagine um what it would be like for the original cast members i know after because this in 2023 it'll be 40 years yeah, it'll be they're going to celebrate their 40th anniversary next year. So it'll be 40 years next year since they filmed that original movie at that house in Cleveland. Brian Jones. Thank you. Brian Jones is the owner who bought this thing and turned it into what it is. What an awesome dude. Yeah, thank you. for Good doing job, that. man. Good job. So if you are anywhere in the the Midwest uh, area around Ohio, if you're in Indiana, Michigan, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Illinois, you can get on the road and drive over and visit the Christmas Story House. They've had people come from all over the world to go to the Christmas Story House. They've had people uh, arrange to get married there. They bought the Bumpus House next door and turned it into a bed and breakfast. Did you guys know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, so the the house that was next door, uh, if you're facing the house, it's to the left. The Bumpus House with the Bumpus Hounds, they bought that and uh, turned it into a bed and breakfast. And then directly across the street from the original house is a gift shop uh, where you can obviously go and get all kinds of Christmas story related stuff. You can get an original full size 50 inch deluxe leg lamp, not a mini one, a real no kidding full size leg lamp. Awesome. It's a major award. And, they, and if you don't want that, you can get a mini one, and you can get ornaments, and you can get uh, cookie cutters. You can get a, a leg lap ornament, a leg lap bottle opener, all kinds of stuff. That's cool. Um, you can get a you can get a miniature uh, edition of the Schwartz home from. There you go. <laughs> you oh you, you oh you know what they're doing? You can create. You can build your own christmas story village around your christmas tree oh that's cool 
Oh, wow. That is awesome. That is smart. That is so smart. So if you wanted to do a winter, you know, your, your winter little winter village thing around your Christmas tree or on your mantle or whatever. And Ralphie beating the kid up. Yes. Ralphie beating <laughs> up the bully, the open in the leg lamp. Oh, man. The Schwartz house. Oh, this that is cool. That is cool. There's the little Randy and the little boys getting ready to go to school. And the cold, and that's, that is fantastic. So if you want to do something Americana, if you want to experience Americana, if you want to do something wholesome with your family this holiday season, uh, jump your, get you, load the family up in a car and drive your butts up to Cleveland, Ohio and visit the Christmas Story House. Uh, if you're a fan of the, of the movie, I guarantee you will not. You won't regret it. It's a, it's time well spent. And yeah, uh, uh, yeah, we've been, you know, we've been mentioning this pretty much uh, every holiday season for however long since we went there. Yeah, since, since the show started. Well, since we did the show, and and I, you know, I'm I'm trying to do a service uh, to those guys since they did a service to us. You know, that guy put in that guy put in a lot of money and investment, and he took a risk. He's like, man, I'm going to do this. I hope people show up. Yeah, I hope people actually like that movie. Uh, Zach, you can go ahead and play the opening. I don't think we played it yet. Yeah, let's play the opening. Welcome to Student Proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. It is us, and we are here, and it's time to, to kick this bad boy off. And uh, as we do every single uh, every single show, uh, we're going to, uh, well, we're going to start off with a Duracoat finished firearm moment. All right, uh, the seasons, they are changing. Uh, yes, they are, and they change fast. That's why we That's why we never do a fall finish on our guns. Yeah, there is no fall. Because there. by the time we would do it and, and cure it, it would be falls over with. It's like bing, bang, boom. Two weeks, was it two weeks ago that we went out to take pictures in the mountains? Yeah, I think so. It was two weeks ago. So two weeks ago, we went out to take pictures of the the kids, and and uh, it was uh, what in the in the fifties. Yeah, it was nice. It was in the fifties. It was, nice it was sunny. It was nice. This morning, we went out. It was a mixture of rain, sleet, mid thirties, and it's supposed to get down into the teens this weekend. So what the f? Uh, so that's that's pretty much why we just do summer and winter goings. <laughs> I guess you could do uh, you could do regional stuff like you could do desert, jungle, whatever. But uh, if you would like to, uh, if you would like to put a seasonal coating, let's say you got a favorite shotgun, a favorite rifle, a favorite whatever, and you use it all year long. You use it in the wintertime to hunt coyotes uh, or wolves or bears or I don't know what you're hunting in the wintertime. Uh, maybe uh, jackrabbits or something. Uh, Some stuff. You want it to be a white. Well, you can do that. And then it's the summertime and you're surrounded by green. You want to do green or you want to do green and brown. You want to do green, brown, and black. Uh, they've got it. It's called the uh, Removable Mission Specific Camouflage Coating. And they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven different, twelve different colors. Twelve different colors from which to choose. And uh, you put those on there. And then when you're done, you use the uh, mission specific remover, the camouflage remover. And I would suggest a big blue, one of those 3M scratch pad dealios. And uh, you spray the remover. Put on a mask because you don't want to suck this stuff in. Spray the remover on it and uh, wash it off, rub it off, you know, get clean it off and then put the new thing on there. Uh, so uh, if that is something that you're interested in, that is something that they have available for you. And if you don't care, 
you're like, I don't care about any of that stuff. I just want my gun to look good. Well, there's numerous camo packs. We talked about gun tattoos. Was it last week we talked about gun tattoos? I think so. Yeah, it was last we week. Talked, yeah, last week we talked about gun tattoos. My, so they've got my the timeline is so messed up. Oh right yeah, now. I have no idea. The template patterns. We've got the template pat. They've got the template patterns. You can do tiger stripe and traditional and twig and stick and skulls and barbed wire and flames and everything. So just the and if, if you don't feel like doing it yourself, oh, they even have a tribal tattoo one. Freaky deaky for all you MMA guys out there. You can get a tribal tattoo. Yeah, like, gun. What, what tribe are you in? Yeah. Um, the, why do you have a tribal tattoo? Yeah. <laughs> so. uh if you don't want to do it yourself, go to, is it Camo Martin, Mountain Arms? Yeah, Camo Mountain Arms. In, yeah, if you don't want to do it yourself, if you don't trust yourself to do it, contact Camo Mountain Arms. He does good work. And uh, he can hook you up. The, the dude's name is Don. Don! Give him a call. Don. Tell him that um, if, if you use the promo, promo code SOTG, you get a 5% discount. That's right. <laughs> Don's He's out like, oh, there. come on. Don's out there. He's like, you know, I didn't authorize that he would honor it he's that kind of guy he would honor it he's a nice guy oh uh, but any hooser any hooser so that is your Durco finish fire moment oh we have a question or no, a comment or a, a concern a, or, comment about a quality comment. cure time quality uh, note from cure andrew d time. on discord it's in the finished firearms channel mm -hmm. and he said that uh, you don't think paint needs time to cure and gain its resiliency. And the reason this is because there's a, uh, people on the internet that talk about the cure time for products like Duracoat is, is is too long. It takes too long. Too long. Yeah, I shouldn't have to wait that long. And so he just sent a picture of the maintenance section of the manual for the $1.25 million crane that just started in his yard. Uh, the section uh, here on cleaning the machine, it says, do not use any aggressive cleaning agents or high pressure cleaners to clean the machine for during the first two months after it has been put into operation or after it has been repainted. So that is a two month cure time. Wow. This will allow the paint to cure completely. So a $1.25 million piece of machinery, they said, let it cure for two months. So two weeks doesn't seem very long when, uh, yeah, compared to two months, does it? So yeah. he, he's just dropping that in there. Thank you. And I thought it was interesting. Thank you, Andrew Duncan, for uh, yeah. for letting the people know. And, yeah, the crybabies out there are like, I shouldn't have to wait that long. Uh, okay. Well, the, how do we get to a point in humanity? This is a deeper discussion. People are so weak, stupid, and the, disgusting. The public show, but how do we get to the point in humanity where it's like we need things now? It's not because they're weak stupid and disgusting it's no it's it is it's the uh it's, it's the instant gratification yeah but We're, why did that happen like you why wanted, did your generation let this happen to us is what i'm asking you go fornicate yourself i've been doing it right my whole life <laughs> oh yeah but you're one person so well i can only do so much um anyway so quality cure time uh that note from andrew dia kind of it it uh it disqualifies is that the right word? Disqualifies the uh, the complaints of the interwebs. Uh, Crybaby idiots. Yep. All right. So uh, you wanted to talk about honoring your ancestors? Oh yeah, I talked a little bit about this. In are you are you the in the? Uh, uh, are you a red panda? Yes. You talk about the yeah. I talk about red panda. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I talked a little bit about this on the teaser, and apparently Zach decided he didn't want to listen, so he left. And he came back at the end, and he's like, "Oh, that piqued my interest." And what were you saying? And then <laughs> I realized that the teaser bit didn't get it into the show anyway. So here you go. I was driving. Here I was. There I was behind the wheel. And uh, what you know what happens when you drive? Those of you truck drivers, you know you have a lot of thinking time. And uh, so that's what I was doing. I was thinking, and something made me come to the conclusion that we are doing our ancestors a great disservice. If we choose to ignore the teachings and the information, well, the information that they acquired and the teachings that they put forth. And the reason being is because there's a whole lot of people in the history of the earth that have died to make human beings and society what those two things are to this day. And so it, 
that being the case, if there's a lot of people that have made a lot of sacrifices, including death, then us as the current generation that is walking the earth or the generations that are walking the earth, if we choose to ignore the information, because that's what it is, we're choosing to be ignorant if we choose to ignore the information and we disregard the teachings of our ancestors, then that is very disrespectful to them. And so the question is, how can we take what our ancestors figured out works best for us humans and continue that to our posterity? And um, that's just something we're not going to answer that here on the show. It's just a question I wanted to pose to you. What can you do in your daily life to make sure that the things that your parents and your grandparents and your great grandparents taught you when you were growing up? How do you, especially if it's valid information, there are some things that may be outdated, but there's a whole lot of things that still work just fine. So what can you do every day to make sure that that gets passed on to the future generation? And it, if you don't have children, it doesn't necessarily have to be your kids. It can be just the future generation in general, right? Mm -hmm. So what can you do in your life to make that happen? Well, it's interesting that you bring that up because... Uh well, we had a situation here where apparently a, uh, a young man grew up either without a father or had a father that didn't teach him very well. Uh, you guys, have you, you guys seen the, uh, the Uber crybaby, uh, the, the latest millennial Gen Z, not even a millennial, a Gen Z crybaby, uh, on the, on the interwebs. This, this video has been shared <laughs> since last week. This video has been shared with me um, innumerable times. And Jared, Zach, do you have the, uh, the updated three methods to prevent your son from becoming a pussy uh, article? Just dropped it in the notes, in fact. All right. So if you open that, if you open that three methods, are the three methods article, why how did this happen there was an impetus I mean, what happened that there was an impetus for me to make this oh i know what it was it was the boy scouts deciding that uh you're not allowed to use squirt guns because they're guns and uh, you could use water balloons as long as they were the size of a golf ball and biodegradable this is when you say what the F kind of water balloon is the size of a, oh no, ping pong ball. The size of a ping pong ball and is biodegradable. Uh, and you're not you know allowed the, to have squirt gun fights you know the because smaller they're the guns. Balloons, the less likely they are to break. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was More likely say, they are to summer, hurt like a mofo. <laughs> yeah. This summer uh, we went over to Sammy's mom's house and she got uh, her ne nephew a bunch of these water balloons. Mm -hmm. And they're like the real fancy ones where it's like you got the little hook up to the hose and then the hose oh, yeah, is connected yeah, yeah. to 57 different balloons and they yeah. pop off. And he could not break them by throwing them. Like he oh, tried yeah. to, he threw as hard as he could. And like I grabbed a couple and chucked them. And it's like as hard as I could broadside into somebody's back just went bloop and just fell off. And they were full. <laughs> so like A, a ping pong ball one, definitely not breaking unless you throw it against a freaking freaking plank a of nails building or something yeah and b that's still lame even if they did break. yeah it's still lame so oh you just got a little bit of water on you oh you're little like a quarter ounce of water on you i hope you don't die how long uh, is that video the video is only like two minutes can, can we play it about I two minutes seen yeah. It yet. yeah so uh sure here, well, here's the thing sorry so to throw that at you, Zach. um little little johnny nimrod here he this this is where we're at you're like, come on, Paul, this is just one guy. No, this isn't. Remember the other day I came home and I told you what I experienced at a coffee shop? I was sitting there with my laptop, drinking my coffee, working on my work. And the kid, the 20 something kid behind the counter who was in charge, the supervisor, I see him come out from back, from the back with a white piece of copier printer paper with like words written in marker and it said you know oh, yeah. lobby closed and he tapes it up on the front on the door and locks it this is the middle of the day on a sunday like i don't know two o'clock 
And I so I look up and I see that there's the kid who's a supervisor and one, two, three other people in the coffee shop. Right. This is a coffee shop, not a five star restaurant, not a McDonald's or whatever. They have a drive through and a walk up. And part of the problem, though, is when you do that, uh, a lot of these all these coffee shops now have I don't know if Bean and Brew has it, but they have apps so you can jump on your app order your coffee, pay for it, and then just walk in, go to the end of the counter, and it has your name on it. You just pick it up and walk out, right? You don't even have to talk to anybody. They lock both lobby doors? Yeah. Okay. I was just thinking. Yeah, so he locked the the front door. Oh, but not the side one. So people, yeah, the the patio one was open. It was open? open? Yeah. (laughs) The one at the patio. But nobody goes in that Well, now that I know, if I ever walk up, the front door is locked, I'll go to the side one. So my point is, is, uh, and what happened and I'm just sitting there minding my own business. I was like, I don't know what's going on here. I said, but I'm pretty sure that the corporate policy is not to put a, a sign on the door that says lobby closed. Well, what happened was there was people in the coffee shop. So when they wanted to leave, they walked over to the door. And of course, it's locked. So they reached down, they flipped the little deadbolt thing, open it, and they walk out. Well, of course, now the door is unlocked and people don't stop to read the signs on the door. They just grab the door, come in. So a guy comes in with his wife. And the the little manager supervisor kid says, "Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, the lobby's closed. We're really short handed." And I was, and I'm sitting there. I was like, "Squeeze me. There's you and three other people. You got a drive through, a register, and that's it. We ran. You have a, one register and a drive through. When I was in high school, we ran a Wendy's dinner section, a, a dinner rush, with three people in the entire store." Yeah. It's the front registers, the sandwich makers, the grill, the drive throughs, both of the front, the first window and the second window. And it sucked, but we didn't tell people, oh, I'm sorry, we're too short handed. We, we gave the customers what they wanted. Yeah. You, you didn't put a, a might have taken a little longer, sign. but yeah, it's. You didn't put a handwritten sign on the door. The and this is a coffee shop. All right. You're making drinks. You're like, yeah, they serve food too. All of their food is pre made. If you want it warm, they throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds. It's not like they're making food, dropping fries, doing salads. You have to make drinks and hand people out cookies. You can't do that with four people. So when I saw this, because so I witnessed that with my own eyes. <laughs> now, to be fair about the the Wendy's dinner rush thing, yeah, our sandwich maker, Bobby, was like a magician. Uh, <laughs> like somebody would order he'd be like poof here's a sandwich uh, poof, holy cow so this 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 vagina with legs this this vagina with with scruff um he's the video's ready he, he's having a stroke right so this is a a a teenager right a gen z in the back room of a starbucks recording on his phone about how he's having a stroke because they're so busy so listen up america this is the country you're inheriting people wonder why we need a union at starbucks and i am literally about to quit like i i don't know if i'm gonna do it but like i really want to i almost walked out today and i'm crying in the back room right now and i almost cut on the floor it's just I like I get I'm like a full time student. I get scheduled for 25 hours a week, and then on weekends they schedule me the entire day, open to close. I'm on the schedule for eight and a half hours, both Saturday and Sunday. I'm like three and a half hours into my shift. There's so many customers, and we have four people on the floor all day. <laughs> Only five people were put on the schedule, and somebody had to call out. And there are four people running the whole store, and there's so many customers, and there's possibly scheduled five people. <laughs> We only have 13 people employed at this store, and there's so many customers, and they are good. We don't have fair scheduling. Managers don't care about us. Our manager was supposed to come in this weekend, and he took himself off the schedule, so he wouldn't be able to be held accountable for calling out. He just literally tore down the schedule that he was scheduled on and put up a new schedule where he was on the schedule. Also, he couldn't have even seen that he was scheduled in the first place because he didn't want to be held accountable for not wanting to come in. They don't want to help us. We need a union because this can't happen. This can't happen. We need fair scheduling. We need 
managers to hold themselves accountable for helping their workers. They refuse to turn mobile orders off. We need the liberty to be able to do that because there's so many mobile orders and I need to get through all of them. And then people are yelling at me because they don't have their orders ready. And they don't know what to do. <laughs> and a customer was misgendering me tonight, like really badly. I didn't have their this order ready. Okay, stop. Like, stop. It's fake. Is it fake? Okay, I don't is this, think so. Is is it, is it, I don't think this is fake. fake. I feel like there's a it's too low quality to be fake. And he's got the he, smock he on just and said, everything. Play, play the a, rest of it. A customer misgendered him. And play the rest of it. And they're like, she's clearly incompetent. I have a full mustache and beard. Mm, that's actually <laughs> not a full fuck? beard, but that's. <laughs> I don't get accommodations for being neurodivergent. I don't. <laughs> like I can't. Use, like I, people get mad at me for using my sick time. I don't even know what to do anymore. I'm like at my wits end with this job. I really am. <laughs> wow. So, is that the end of it? Yeah. yeah that was so the end. Uh, okay, if, that, if that's real, um, I th I, I'm pretty I sure know. that's real. It's been shared with me by yeah. like Hefe is the f the first person to share this with me was El Hefe last week, like on Thursday or Friday, and then over the weekend it got shared Everybody, with me yeah. like. 100 times and this is so uh, from my perspective like you can't enable this kind of behavior but at the same time knowing what we know about how how crappy food affects people's brains testosterone uh, well, there's yeah, no but, testosterone in this but, kid's body what, what i'm saying is it's it might be impossible for this kid to live like we do He's broken. So, so we He's can, like we can say broken. We can look at him and laugh and point and say, "This is wow. This dude's a pussy." And and how do we, uh, you know, how do we make him not one? And then there's the other side. It's like, well, if what we've said, what what we've reported on about the dieting and whatnot is true, then then that's the nature of the younger beings because. The nutrition is doing it. Well, not only so, that, but, but you've got a combination. Real, real quick, I just want to throw this out there before we even go any further. Okay. There have been a lot of vegetarians in the world who haven't been getting a lot of protein, have been eating a lot of like things that you would not think, who aren't throwing yeah, fits. But that, doesn't weak is just dude. that doesn't have anything to do with the omega-3-6 ratio. You can still be a vegetarian and get that. Or maybe it's a vegan. Which vegetarians eat fish? Yeah, vegetarians yeah, eat fish. Yeah, so, so they vegetarians would be fine. eat fish. Yeah, vegans don't. are lunatics. They're they're but, like they have an eating disorder. But what what? So I mean, you what you're doing right now, Zach, is you're you're um, justifying what I just said even more because the the people that seem to be the lunatics are the ones that have the the diets that are more I guess mainstream is the best way to say it. But it's it's one of the things where it pains me to watch this video and. And then point and laugh because how do that's not fixing. I mean, that's not fixing crap. How do we how do we fix it? I, we don't fix it by pointing and laughing and saying, well, wow, this dude's a. But you, but you, wow, also, look like, at that. you have to see the symptom of the disease in order to cure right, the yeah. disease. This is a symptom of the disease. The, all right. And we also talked about the reality that testosterone levels in in young men, which should be sky high, are sky are at all time lows. Yeah. Which um there's well so we've got the test yeah. air and what well, who was it talking about the taint? Rogan and um the what's doctor, his nuts? The, the doctor said. It wasn't just the doctor, but it was the guy from M T V. The guy who's the oh. uh the the um the godfather of of podcasting. The podfather. Oh, uh, I don't know. Adam Adam Carolla. No, not Adam Carolla. It was Adam uh no idea the pod they call him the pod father oh because it is adam, adam curry oh curry curry adam yeah. curry when adam curry was on rogan's show they talked about the this about, about the taint size and about the, yeah because uh, of the doctor show yeah because of the doctor show the doctor show is the i was listening to that one it's i can't remember her name yeah and i wish i could recall it but there's a an episode with a doctor that talks about the um I think that it was specifically plastics, yeah, and the leaching and the chemicals into the food and the the drinks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And not all plastics do that, but there are specific types that that do. But she was talking about that, and she said the word taint. She said it makes your taint smaller. Yeah, you're a male. 
Um, and or, well, that's how they which directly they, correlates. They were to able the- to actually measure the data was by measuring the taints of the males. And Nobody ever asked me to measure mine. I know. She, I didn't she get said that. that. And I was like, I got to listen to this whole episode. I was waiting for was an, an invitation that said the word to, taint. To participate in the, in the survey and the study. And yeah. nobody ever, you know. Uh, well, they, they don't have enough magnifying we, we, glasses. We actually, I actually know a 20-something oh, hear who, is, who is actually taking testosterone therapy. And a 20-something man a few. Yeah. shouldn't have to engage in testosterone therapy. Their testosterone level should be high. So I wrote a book, <laughs> Three Methods to Prevent Your Son from Becoming a Pussy. Uh, well, that's an article. I wrote you the, know, you I, should update this. It is. And maybe nutrition would be one mm, of them. Yeah. Because we didn't know. <laughs> when you wrote the article, I don't think we had any idea about that. What, well, and I what wrote the, the book, too. I wrote the book, oh, the, Team yeah, Honey yeah, Badger, yeah, yeah. Raising Fearless Kids in a Cowardly World. Did you put nutrition in there? Uh, I don't remember. It's been, this book was written and released in 2015. Yeah, so probably not because we didn't really have enough. Yeah. I don't know if the Hiblin study existed then well, or not, but. I, I knew about the, I knew about like feeding your kids garbage. Uh, I knew about that. Yeah, but we didn't have, oh. I don't think we had data anyway. You might have. I didn't have data. But uh, not, not the amount of data that we have today. But still. There, there's a there, you know this isn't just one symptom you've got lots of things you have the you have the uh the participation trophy world right you've got we've got we're 20 plus years into this this ridiculous participation trophy you know crap uh we're and it's gotten worse see it used to be well, everybody gets a trophy because you tried, or we don't keep score because if a team loses because they didn't score as many points as the other team, then the kids on that team will feel bad and their their self esteem will be harmed. Then we just moved into this words are weapons kind of a thing, or like you know we can't use certain words because you know, they're happened offensive. To stones, and, but words will not. Yeah, me. words are offensive, and and that then we just like we went off the freaking deep in and now we're telling eight-year-olds that they might actually be a little girl even though they have a penis and that's one that's an epiphany i just had when i was in elementary school i think it was the teachers would would help us remember the thing sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt me yeah and fast forward 15 20 years later and words are hurting people yeah like how did that happen but the my point of bringing that up what I said earlier about the nutrition and and how do we actually solve this problem rather than just sharing the video and laughing because that doesn't solve anything. Um, I know the the student that got an audience that's listening to me right now is full of males with a lot of bravado, and so my question is, how do we actually fix this? Because it's easy for us to get into a loop of ha 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 ha, wow that's stupid, I can't believe people are like that, but people are. They uh, clearly they are like that. And it's actually more. There are more people like that now than there were 10, 15, 20 years ago. Well, uh, so how do we how do we help these people? And maybe this one's not helpable. Yeah, I don't in think general, this kid is. I, how, I think how do that, we but you don't know the kid. Yeah. But in general, how do we say or how do we do? And that's where your solutions come in. How do we as a culture not only help our own culture, but other cultures outside of us. Cause there's a whole lot of loud people that are a lot louder than all our culture, even though we may be the stronger culture. So how do we help others outside of the culture? Um, fix this problem. Cause it's, it's, it's clearly here. You know, if you look at, Maybe it's just that the internet exists. I don't know. Maybe. No, there's a whole well, lot of questions. I mean, that I yeah, all, yeah. all we can really do is help spread information. Yeah. So and, they, and to be completely honest, I, I feel like, like I, I kind of understand what you're you're saying. Jerry was like, "Oh, we shouldn't just laugh at it." Or, well, I didn't. But I didn't say we shouldn't laugh. I right? said we because shouldn't just laugh th- at it. Things are comical. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. But we also need to provide a solution. But that's what I'm saying. Well, is like I, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, I feel like there is also a degree of laughing at this also does kind of help spread the the concept of like no this isn't something that should this be is normal. not this acceptable is, should be acceptable yeah. you see that's that's because because like kind of like that what dad's saying with the participation trophies thing which is like if, if we were to look at this guy and go oh poor guy is, is there some way we can help him then that right. kind of might 
put into people's brains. It's like, well, if I throw a fit and cry and freaking you know, like a child at work. Well, and sometimes then, tough love is the answer. Right? Exactly. So, yeah. Absolutely. That's why I said earlier, but when I started this topic, I said something like, this is not, it's inexcusable or, or I, something along the lines of, I'm not making an excuse for this kid, but I'm trying to figure out the goal of this conversation is to figure out how we can help kids not be like this. And dad already has a, a, a set of solutions that are at least a partial solution yeah. to the to this problem. Well, if, if you're new here, if you're new within the last few years, is that is that a taint thing? <laughs> That's a taint story. Um, That's male sexual organ. Yeah. If, if you're new here, uh, number yep. one. Shanna Swan, thank you very yeah, much. That's Dr. We, we wrote an I wrote an article, and it was published in May of 2015. As a matter of fact, you, here's the thing. This article was the precursor to the book. Yeah. So I wrote the article. The article, it, it did what you're supposed to do. People either loved it or they threw themselves on the floor in conniption fits because they hated it so much. Yeah. The, the Karens and the Kyles were just foaming at the mouth. Ah! Um, but the thing is, is nobody could prove anything that it, it was wrong. It just hurt their feelings. They didn't like what I said. Well, they can fornicate themselves. So read the article first. The book is there. Team Honey Badger, Raising Fearless Kids in a Cowardly World. How do you raise fearless kids and grandkids? And I dedicated that book to my grandchildren yet unborn. Oh, no way. Yeah. Don't you remember? No, I didn't. I, I don't remember reading that portion of Let it. Let me see. I, I might have that book. You, you keep talking all the yeah. And, and, ah, uh, he left. Yeah, sucker. Okay, but yeah, Dad, go ahead and gra grab that real quick. But just Jared, real quick, just to clarify, uh, I know that you started off by saying like I, we can't just laugh at it, but that's why I was saying with like you know yeah we it, I think it's okay to laugh at it because that also helps spread awareness, and also we can help provide information on these things. Yeah. You know, well, my my natural personality is to defend the weak, and um, so that's why I think my initial thought was it's not really nice and to laugh at this kid and blah, 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 where, you know, maybe it'll help, but there's a lot, there's a whole lot of other stuff that we can do that provides a solution to not, maybe not this kid, maybe this kid, but, but just children and the future generations in general. Dedication. This book is lovingly dedicated to my three honey badgers, Jared Paxton and Zachary, though they are grown and capable of acting as sheepdogs. I trust that they will take the lessons they have learned and embrace them while keeping the badger spirit alive in whatever situation they may find themselves for my grandchildren yet unborn. I pray this book will be a way to preserve the lessons and ideals that should be passed down to them. Well, there you go. What did you say about how can we make sure that we pass down the uh, lessons from our ancestors? Yeah, everybody needs to write a book. We Quick. do things like this. We write freaking books and we write and we like, well, we, oh, there's even pictures of, of my kids when they were little and dirty, little monsters. We've got to move on. Yes. Before we have to move on, but this is important. The, hold and, on a second. I, I have to, I have a quick aside and it's going to be quick and we're going to move forward. Um, on the ride, I was listening to a little bit of Jordan Peterson. And he brought up the point that uh, reading silently is a relatively new thing for humans within the last 100 or 200 years. And I had never thought of that, one. And it was kind of like blew my mind. I'm like, oh, right. People didn't always read because books, the, the printing press didn't exist. You rich people had books and peasants didn't. So it's a relatively new thing. And then so that got my my brain turning and it's like, well, what is the best way for humans to consume things in an audio visual manner? And is that why the internet and videos are so consumable for people? And they'd rather do that than read an article or a book, for instance, it really takes a lot of yeah. mental effort to sit down, make yourself sit down and read a book. I, I think that makes sense because it, it's like, it's like points of contact, you know, where it's like when you're reading a book, you're just looking at it. Say you're watching a, a movie or something, you're you're hearing it and you're seeing it. It's being done for you. Yeah. It, the information is being fed to you. When you read a book, you have to take the time to consume it, and that is discipline. That's why reading books is important, because it instills self-discipline. All right, moving on. SDS Imports, thank you very much for making this show possible. 
We appreciate it. We would appreciate it. I would appreciate it. Jared would appreciate it. If you would go to SDS Imports website, it's sdsimports.com, and uh, show them your love. You could show love on uh, their socialist media pages, uh, whether it's fascist book or Insta garbage or whatever. Uh, but just let them know that you're out there and that you're listening and that student of the gun sent you because that is important. That is important. If if we want to keep doing this, we got to support our sponsors, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So SDS, Sierra, Delta, Sierra. Uh, that is SDSimports.com. Shotguns, pistols. They actually just released, I believe, another new 1911 45. No. I believe so. Talk I saw off shotguns and TSAS pistols. Yeah, if, if you follow their Instagram page, they're, they're always putting up little cool pictures of their uh, various uh pistolas and uh, etc yep they have a, they have a new one they have a new pistol it's called the night stalker it's got a yeah. completely blacked out one right no it looks like that it, it's like battle gray oh, that's cool. and they cut holes in it i don't know why they did that but hey if that's your bag man because it looks cool yeah it looks cool uh, if, if, if you paint flames on it, it will go faster. That's right. That's if you paint flames on your car, it will go faster. We all know that. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, High Point Firearms, the makers of the 10 millimeter carbine. If you're looking for the gateway drug into the 10 millimeter cartridge, uh, that is a fantastic gateway drug that will get you in the door. They're 10 millimeter carbines. They're less than $500. So you can get a 10 millimeter firearm for less than 500 bucks uh, and get started today. That's right. And we have a little bird told me that the... Are we allowed to say this out loud? Oh, yeah, because okay. they, they actually they uh, did it on their press release there. That uh, at the SHOT Show 2023... <gasps> 2023? Whoa. Is, that, is that the one that's coming? Yeah. The SHOT Show 2023... They're planning to unveil the the YC one, the YC one that everyone's been waiting on. So we shall see what we shall see. Juxy.com, if you want to uh, watch videos, um, we've got Juxy.com. There's a fantastic uh, center there. Um, uh, speaking of consuming content in mm-hmm. audio audio visual format. Go to studentofthegun.com slash Jukesy. You get directly to our Student of the Gun channel. Yep. I'm looking at it right now. Oh, wow, you did a... Uh, oh, that was one day ago. Yeah. That was the most recent, recent Legion of Michael podcast, I guess. Yep. There will be famine. Um, there's a couple of videos that are the most recent videos. Our Texas mom fins off burglar. Congratulations. Uh, don't forget the gun tattoo. Buying your first AR, what do you need? There's a bunch of videos on here that, uh, oh, wow, a Battle Box 91 review and unboxing. And 92 is coming up soon. And we've got a 92. Yeah. And there will be a Crate Club also. Yeah. Because you know that Crate Club, you can have Crate Club and Bottle bo- Battle Box at the same time. You can. Bottle you're allowed. You're an, you're an adult. Would you like some bottles? <laughs> that could, oh, that's a whiskey subscription. No, the Bottle Box that come, but not here in Utah. All right, Zach, go ahead and tell the new listeners what they need to do. Attention new listeners, we produced a complimentary online training course called 7 Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Oh, snap, crackle, and pop. It's time for a Brownells Bullet Points brought to you by our good buddies at Brownells.com. All right, before we get into some hardware discussion, quick aside, and I promise it will be a quick aside. Uh, we surpassed on fascistbook.com 1 million views of the 
BRN177ECHO2. And if you don't know what that is, that's the Brownells. It is the faithful reproduction of the XM177ECHO2. Uh, and uh, we have over 1 million views, and a lot of them were you guys. So thank you very much for liking and sharing. Which and, one was it? Um, the Which, XM. XM177. Echo 2. Yeah. So uh, I'm just trying to find the link for you guys. That happened. That happened. And uh, thank you very much. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. Brownells, uh, about two weeks ago, we talked about red dots. And we talked about uh, how our, our good friend Ken Hackathorn did a very detailed video. We actually shared that with you about red dots, pros, and cons. And one of the cons that he brought up was the, the difference between a closed emitter optic and an open emitter optic. Now, an open emitter, basically, you guys should know that the red dot isn't actually in the glass. <laughs> when you're looking at the, you got your little red dot on your pistol and you're looking, you see, you see that little red aiming dot. It's actually not in the glass. It actually is generated from the base and it is emitted and projected onto that glass. That's why you can see it. Now, if, if you ever took your, your optic and you looked really closely you could see that there you know the emitters down there and what ken pointed out he said look if you get dust lint dirt snow rain water whatever if any of that gets down in there it will disrupt the emitter and it can prevent you or it can either completely remove the red dot or it can break it up and, and so on and so forth and they said that's why there are companies coming up with closed emitter systems well guess what bing 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 you go to the new product section of brownells and what do they have they have the brand new kraken 3 moa red dot from swamp fox optics and it is a closed emitter optic just like what we just talked about exactly as we just talked about um so that is uh, it's there and they're they're running they're sub three hundred, and they they actually are, I believe they're the R yes they are the R M R, cut they're they so if you have a pistol that has and where are we at now with that one? Uh, uh, it won't, I don't know how to tell. Oh okay. Oh wait hold on. Uh, if you have a pistol that has a an R M R footprint, whether it's a G lock or a Canic or fill in the blank uh, if it has the RMR footprint, which is very popular. I really think that it's kind of like the VHS tapes versus the Betamax tapes or, you know, um, what was the other thing that was CD was competing against? I can't even remember. Laser uh, disc. Laser disc versus CD versus whatever. Uh, oh, versus Blu-ray. Yeah, like CDs, Blu-rays, blah, 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 blah. Right. I believe that as time goes by, that the RMR footprint is going to be the one that comes out on top. Uh, I've noticed that most of the uh, most of the new products that are coming out, like from Swamp Fox, from Shield Optics, from Holosun, that the majority of them are following the RMR pattern. So, you know, the the jury's still out, but I, I would say that's a safe bet that uh, most companies are just going to gravitate towards that. They're going to gravitate towards the RMR footprint. So if you're looking for a closed emitter, and what did they do? The Swamp Fox guys, they have a red dot, and then they have a green dot. And we talked about that at length as well. As a matter of fact, in the book, the martial application of the pistol, we did an entire section, a, cha a chapter, talking about vision and colors and the benefits between green and red you know how how green may benefit you more than red and so on and so forth so uh if you haven't uh if you haven't taken advantage of that yet you you can and you should and as a matter of fact in the uh well if you go to sotgu.com and uh, sign up to hit just click the notify me button 
because we've got some really good educational material coming uh, your way. It's coming your way. We're, uh, we're releasing the hounds. The hounds will be this released. Week. The hounds of education will be released yes. to you very we've got soon. A, a small group of testers that will be in there Ooh. testing this new stuff this week. So as, as long as they give me good feedback and uh, it's all good to go, then it'll be coming out shortly. Yeah, see, that's what happens when uh, when you are a, a, a cool, hip dude in the student of the gun world. Sometimes we reach out to you and we say, hey, would you like to test a new product for us? And then sometimes you say yes. And One of the problems that. that we have with our student of the gun audience is that we have so many people that are good testers. <laughs> is that one of the problems <laughs> yeah we have so many people that are good testers it's like i only needed like five this time so some of you are are indeed cool people but you didn't get the invite so. <laughs> you're all cool yeah. you're all cool man there you go all right so let's move on thank you very much for paying attention to that let's move on from our brownells bullet points on to well me being quiet and letting zach talk ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Do. That's what you should do. All right, what do you got going, Zach? Uh, we got a bunch of stuff going. Thank you to everybody who was on the uh, who got in on the Halloween sale. But uh, recently, one of our newest products to the SOTG shop, SOTG.com, is the Limit Kit L M I T, which is <clears throat> stands which is an acronym stands for Laceration and Minor Injury Treatment Kit. Uh, and I actually, we actually got some very useful feedback from the audience, uh, from, from you listening. And I think there was something of a misconception. Maybe we fostered it. I'm not sure. Probably I, we fostered it. We're going to smash is, it right now. Yeah. Exactly. We're, we're going to smash that misconception, which is the limit kit is not a kit to get instead of a full sized lifesaver kit. It is not something that you look at and go, well, I don't need a tourniquet and tape and a nose hose. It's something to get in addition to. Because from what I've seen in my personal experience, thankfully I have yet to need to break open my kit to tourniquet somebody or pop in a nose hose. But I have ripped open my kit, I think, four times in the past to get either the gloves, the gauze, or both. Mm -hmm. Because I caught my hand on the gate or I needed to pick up something that I needed a glove for, or uh, somebody nearby had cut the, had cut themselves, and I just need to stuff it in there real quick. And that's kind of why we made the limit kit is for when there's it's bigger than a band aid, smaller than a tourniquet, something that you can throw in addition to your lifesaver kit that'll fit. Like it honestly, if if you have good enough size pockets, you could probably fit both in one pocket. Yep, uh, and. The and one of the purposes of this limit kit is to stash in your. You could put like fifteen of these in your car because they're small enough to put. You could put one in each door. You got at least four. Yep. Then you'll always have it with you. Um, uh, let me uh, tell you what Doctor Dan, Doctor Dan Olasnicki, our SWAT doctor, um, he's been prepping kits to send overseas, yeah. and this is exactly what he's doing. And he calls them consumables. Yeah, that's what they are. He said, yeah. these are the consumables that people need to have lots and lots of, yes. is the gauze and the wrap. And Dan's a huge fan of Coban. He said, I use Coban more than I use tape. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, well, he is a, a doctor. So. He is a doc. Well, what does he know? Yeah. He is He is an emergency room physician. He didn't say the word taint, though. So He I, didn't say taint. I don't know uh, if we I, should be friends anymore. We could ask him about taint size but that's a totally different subject <laughs> all right let's move on to wait, the Zach's wait there's one more thing oh one more thing sorry which is My since bad. uh since the limit kit is to is best used alongside a bigger a pls kit originally hands of combat it's kind of like the sidekick whenever batman doesn't need to d take care of somebody you know robin will beat up the little guys so <laughs> if right now if you use the code in in perpetuity if you use the code sidekick on shopsotg.com, S-I-D-E-C-K-I-C-K. It'll be in the description. Uh, you will get 20% off of the limit kit when you order 
one of the full size kits, an original nice. enhanced or a combat. So once righteous. again, go ahead. I it's righteous. righteous. Oh, righteous. I think it's you said righteous. Just. Uh, so yeah, code sidekick to twenty percent off a limit kit when you order a bigger kit, and uh, yeah, that's so at shopsotg.com. Shop Thank you guys. Com. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Um, so now we can move on. Yes, and if you don't, if here's what I'm going to tell you guys, <laughs> dear Lord, dear Lord, help me. I come to this microphone and I say, this is what's about to happen. This is what you should do. <laughs> I'm not Nostradamus, but I came to this microphone in January of 2020 and said, if you don't have the ammunition you want right now or the amount you want, go buy it right now. And three months later, the price had doubled. Right now, here's what I'm going to tell you. As things start to get more and more dicey, you see, oh, I'm, we're in America and everything's fine here. There's no problems, no whatever. What did we learn from the Ukraine situation? Ukraine, which is a regional conflict, not a world conflict, a regional conflict, almost overnight, tourniquets started disappearing. You know why? Where are all the real, good, genuine, not garbage wish.com tourniquets where are all the real good genuine tourniquets manufactured right here in the united states the rat the cats the that you know. so what happened you had one regional conflict in the ukraine and all almost overnight back order back order cats north american rescue sent out letters to their distributors hey heads up these are going to be back ordered we went to mymedic.com to get rats. Sorry, back ordered. That's just one regional conflict. What is going to happen to medical gear, so medical gear supply, if when Europe goes to war? What's going to happen to the medical supply if when China decides we're going to take Taiwan and you're not going to stop us? What's going to happen? I don't want to hear any of you crying about, oh, how come I can't get medical supplies and tourniquets now? Because I told you, if you don't have it, get it. If you already have it and you're fully stocked, get more. Rock on. Uh, it's like, don't tell have them you not ever, to buy stuff have from you us. Ever said, what is wrong with you? Have you ever said, I have too much medical gear? No. I have too many consumables? No, no I don't think I've ever said that. So I don't have too many edibles. That's uh, I said not. I said consumables, not edibles. You moron! What? All right, let's move on to the Crossbreed Holsters Student of the Gun Homeroom. <laughs> boom! Boom! Ba boom! 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 All right! All right! All right! All right! Part of being an armed citizen is actually carrying your freaking gun. How do we do that? Well, we get a high-quality holster belt combination from our buddies at Crossbreed. Go there. Use the promo code SOTG. Tell them Student of the Gun sent you. Be kind and polite and courteous to them because they have been in our corner for well since the beginning. When I had the idea, when I said, I'm going to do a Student of the Gun radio show, I called up Crossbreed and said, hey, I need someone to help me out. And they said, we're in. First one. Okay. We owe them a debt of gratitude. And at very least, when you contact them, say thanks. All right. Moving on. We've got a story here from CABS58.com. Now, the story, the actual shooting incident occurred a while ago, but they've just released all of the the video footage, the surveillance footage, the body cam footage. So it just popped up to the top, basically, of the news cycle uh, this last weekend. Yep. Police released new body cam video of September shooting at Greenfield Meyer. Dateline, 2 November 2022. Shots fired sent shoppers scrambling outside a Meyer store in Greenfield, Wisconsin. It happened in September. Surveillance and body cam video released today reveal the shocking scene as it unfolded. The morning of September 28th found shoppers and workers walking and driving through this parking lot. But the plans for three of them changed dramatically because of the dispute between strangers. 
a chaotic scene as Greenfield police responded the morning of September 28th. That sentence feels unfinished. <laughs> uh, from store surveillance, we see a blue Toyota 4Runner. A husband and wife in it were leaving the mire in search of her favorite hash browns. Because I that, love me. I, 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 I'm man. glad they put that in there. Uh, they have to put a story to it. Or it's not yeah, they're like, she was looking for hash browns. I, her, told police. I think that, is that a person's name? My, Or her? is that them trying to dictate this? How is so it? M-A-I-H-E-R, my, her, told police. Uh, and was like a little walkway crossing, and the guy, he just came out of nowhere. That's an it awesome is, it statement. Is a, it is a person. Her tells And police. was. Yeah. Uh, like, totally? Yeah. For real? This is really difficult for me. I love read. it when you when they interview people like, so, and was like, crossway there, guy, nowhere? Her tells police. Sit your body. man identified in reports as Elliot Cruz Cruz yelled at her husband. <laughs> Cruz Cruz? Claiming Dunlap disregarded a crosswalk. And then the guy's like, you hear me? You got a problem with me? And then he reached inside our car, the driver's side, and started punching my husband like this and grabbed my husband, said her. Is that what she said? That's what she said. A fight ensued right said. outside the doors. Myers' camera doesn't show it, but Dunlap says Cruz Cruz was kicking him in the face, ribs, and arms. And All right. Yep. Somebody kicks you in the head with their fit, foot. That is deadly force. That is deadly force. That's right. A witness. Co but did he have steel toe boots though? I mean, didn't have steel toe boots. If it wasn't, an I got a size boot, 12. If I kick then, you in the face, you're yeah. probably going to be hurt. A witness called 911 and told dispatch. There were two guys who were fighting and a woman came out with a gun and shot one of them. Well, there you go. That's pretty much it. <laughs> the camera does show her get out of the vehicle, arms up, pointing in the direction of the fight. A minute later, she briefly returns to the forerunner, then gets out again and stays until police arrive. And I told him, I said, stop, stop, stop. I'm scared for my life. I'm scared for my husband. I said, stop. I have a gun and I don't want to shoot you. I have a gun. I have a gun. Well, here, here's what we know. Uh, it says she shot Cruz Cruz. To defend her husband, the gunshot startling witnesses in the parking lot. No. The gunshot startling what these sentences are not good you want to go right for cbs 58 because apparently they have seventh graders writing for them right now the milwaukee county district attorney's office reviewed the case deciding to dismiss it with no charges to anyone the woman clearly shooting in self-defense right she had a ccw permit with her in the forerunner i'm glad she had it in the forerunner and not like somewhere else cruz so did cruz cruz die I want to know, did Cruz Cruz die? Uh, Elliot Cruz Cruz. Uh, yeah, I don't. Elliot Cruz Cruz. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't say here. Do you guys know it, if Elliot Cruz Cruz died? Oh, we're, we're going to get, we're not going to be able to find it because there's too the, many names. The, yeah. The Parkland shooter, Nicholas Cruz has the same C R U Z last name. Oh, geez. All right. So anyway, uh, lots of lessons to be learned here. Number one, uh, if you, if someone see, here's the, this is, there's so many things here. Number one, I would drive away. All right. Gun it, gun, the, hit the accelerator, drive away. Now the problem is, is they're in a crowded parking lot in front of a Meyer store. So if some like guy is like attacking you and you're like, I'm going to get away and you jam and you jump on the accelerator, you got to be careful because you could accelerate and run over people, you know, walking into the store. So that's dicey. Um, number two, don't just randomly attack people because they didn't let you cross the street in front of them. Yeah. Uh, this, this Elliot Cruz Cruz, you know, he's not the, the innocent victim here. You're like, oh, you didn't let me cross? Oh, I, that's a personal affront. I'm going to attack you. Now, what you guys don't know, because you're young, is there was a uh, one of the first, oh, I can't remember where it was, but there's a situation where a guy was stuck in traffic and 
oh yeah it was they they had clipped mirrors right the mi mirrors on the two vehicles had had clipped or touched because they were in bumper to bumper traffic and uh the one guy got out ran over to the uh truck that had clipped his mirror bumped it and it, the dude's windows down because it was warm it was i think it was florida but um he was belted in and the guy starts pummeling his face uh so the guy who's belted in reaches down grabs his pistol and shoots the other dude and he was found to be just it was found to be justifiable because he said he entered his domicile he was well he was he was stuck in he couldn't drive out of traffic yep. and he was belted in so when you're belted in your car and your windows open you pretty much cannot defend yourself i mean we, we understand you guys understand that right it's kind of it's hard to defend yourself because you're attached to the body of the vehicle of the car uh and how many times can somebody punch you in the face in five seconds well, if they're a professional a lot um even if they're not yeah, even if they're not, you know, if they're just a, at an, least an a hole, they can punch you in the face like five times in five seconds. Uh, so don't do that. And the other thing I'm going to say here, and this is just because this woman's an amateur or whatever, she's like, what was the thing? I said, blah, 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 Yeah, it's adrenaline. Yeah. What do we teach people to it's, yell? It's stop which she did why she yelled, stop stop why stop. do we tell people to yell the word stop well because multiple reasons multiple reasons number a, one breathing b training witnesses c it gives the well actually a it gives the person an opportunity to stop yeah b your training witnesses c your breathing yeah and also what we know and i learned this in the academy is that long drawn out commands the person who's in the process of attacking someone fighting whatever they don't they don't hear all that all they hear is it's like charlie brown's you know teacher wah, 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 wah. can confirm i've been in the center in a cage in a center of thousands of people and you can't hear you hear anything thing. nothing you have to very you have to make yourself focus really hard on hearing your corner yeah so the the idea that someone who's like this dude's like pummeling and kicking her husband's face and she's like hey i have a gun and i don't want to shoot you but i will if i have to so stop you should really stop now they don't hear any of that yell stop stop and if they don't do what you have to do that's because you know we call it verbal diarrhea you know the I gotta get this lady credit. She shot the dude without shooting her husband. That I oh yeah yeah, that's, that's well. Apparently, her husband was down on the ground in the fetal position, and and Cruz Cruz was stomping his skull in. Yeah. So there you go. That sucks. All right, Zach has a quick subtopic, and I'm going to answer this as soon as you tell me how far into the show we are, Zach. Uh, we're an hour and twelve minutes in, so I think. We Holy got, crap balls! Yeah, we got sidetracked a little bit, right. so we, we can t we can be quick about this one. But Let, now let's just skip it and save it for tomorrow. Uh, oh, yeah. All right, then we'll we'll, uh, we'll talk we about do it this next week. tomorrow. Oh, we can do never. it next week. We'll yeah. do it never. Got it. Next next week. We can do it next week. For the, Go ahead and drop it next week for the episode. All right, the coming famine. Uh, I'm making a copy of the notes right now. Here's what I want you guys to understand. You're like Paul. What are you talking about? You sound like an alarmist. You sound like an alarmist. No, I'm not an alarmist. I'm a person who's been paying attention to the world for a long time. There are uh, factual, there's factual evidence piling up. I've got a story here. The BASF plant. You say, I've seen BASF, BASF. I've seen that on signs. What does it mean? It's a company that makes chemicals. Okay, I don't care about chemicals. Well, you should, because they make fertilizer. They're the largest manufacturer of fertilizer in the United States of America. Uh, plant, or not in the United States, in the world. Sorry. Strike that, reverse it. In the world, largest in the world. So uh, after the North Harbor explosion, or fire at the North Harbor BASF in Ludwigstaufen, uh, has been extinguished. However, it has reduced their production. Now, this goes all the way back to October 18th. What do we know is going on in Europe right now? What's going on in Europe is fuel and energy prices have doubled, tripled, and quadrupled 
and now are reaching 10 times the norm. So what they're doing, especially in Germany, they're doing it in other countries, but in Germany is manufacturing plants are being shuttered for the winter. They're just shutting them down. They're laying off the workers, and they're like, come back in the spring when it warms up. You say, who cares? I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. It should matter to you because if they can't, what happens when you shut down a fertilizer plant for four months? They don't produce fertilizer. They don't produce. So can they just turn it back on in May or April and catch up to where they needed to be? No. What's going to happen is they're going to have a shortage. And you say, I don't care. I don't need fertilizer. You should care. Because the people who grow the food that goes into your suck hole uh, need it. So there's, if you've been listen, if you listen to Dr. Jordan Peterson's podcast, he interviewed a gentleman named Michael Yan. Michael Yan is a former Green Beret who became a combat correspondent, and he's been to eighty separate countries in his life, uh, and he has been boots on the ground in Asia, South and Central America, and in Europe. Now, when Dr. Peterson, when he interviewed him on his podcast, and we put the link in the show notes for you guys, Michael Yan back in July, remember when we talked about the Netherlands, how they're the number two largest exporter of food in the world, not in Europe, on planet Earth. We're number one, they're number two. So the Dutch government who is in bed with the World Economic Forum, has started attacking farmers. And essentially, they, you know, they've, they uh, what we reported, like some farmers had to reduce their nitrogen emissions by 90%. And he said, you cannot, he's like, you cannot shut off the most productive farmers in Europe on that side of the world you can't shut them off and not expect to pay the price. See, that was back in July. And in during Jordan Peterson's the interview, Michael's talking about how the Russians closed the Nord Stream pipeline for maintenance. Well, my friend Court Graham just interviewed Michael Yan, same guy, last week. So there's about a four-month difference. And what has changed in the world in only three or four months? Well, now the Nord Stream pipeline is gone. It's done. It's blown up, right? Nefarious people blew it up. I'm not going to say who I think did it, but I can tell you this. It wasn't the Russians. So now Germany, in addition to all the other stuff, they're cutting down trees, green trees, to try and burn this winter for fuel. Not going to work. They're, they're digging up brown coal, which is peat, which is terrible. It's, it's the worst kind of coal you could use. Uh, and in the both the Jordan Peterson interview and in the Cork Graham interview, he talks about, and he ticks off one by one, here's a, here's a black swan, here's a black swan, here's a black swan. If you don't know what a black swan event is, read the book. Uh, Black Autumn by Jeff Kirkham and Jason Ross. He's ticking these off. What do you think is going to happen in the world when they can't, when you've got farmers who are productive but are being punished? So now they're not producing. You've got fertilizer companies, plants either not making it or being limited in their ability to make it. What happens when you can't produce food? People still want to eat, right? You're just going to magic the food? Uh, something he brought up was that Gates, as Bill Gates, Bill Gates is a horrible, horrible, just horrible human being. If you haven't figured that out by now, I don't know how to convince you. Buying up farmland and then idling the farms to save the planet. They're going to save the planet by removing you from it. That's how they want to save the planet. They want to save the planet from you. 
And how do they get you off of the planet? Well, they starve you to death. Uh, in Europe, you might freeze to death. In the United States, you're not going to have, or and when they once they do that, they say, oh, you can't get beef, you can't get chicken, you can't get pork, you can't get whatever. It's cool. Here, you're going to eat our impossible meat. It's not actually meat. It's a bunch of garbage, and that's going to make you even weaker. We just talked about that earlier in this episode, about the diet of the average person and how it's made them mentally weak and physically, physically and mentally weak. Drop their, they're going to fill you full of soy so that any testosterone that might be left in your body will go. You don't have to believe me. Don't believe me. I don't care. You don't have to believe me. Listen, we got the links here. We've got the stories. We've been talking about this for years. You know, we had the, uh, what, 93? I don't know. I can't, we, we had so many food production facilities that were sabotaged, had planes flown into them, burned down, that it became almost like white noise. So we stopped paying attention. Then refineries, fuel refineries, and that's another thing. What happens when the farmers can't get enough or they can't afford the fuel for their vehicles, for their tractors, for their production equipment? They either can't get it or they can't afford it. What happens then? Well, what do you mean? They have to. It's the law. You get to go out with the National Guard and hold guns to the farmer's heads and say, get in your tractor and go make us food. That's not how that works. Maybe. Are you going to give, oh, I know. Let's let the government take charge of food production. Because in the history of the world, the government taking over food production has never resulted in famine. Oh, that's right. The government taking over food production always results in famine. Always. China, food food production. Chinese government, Chicoms take over food production. 40 million people starve to death. Stalin takes over food production. He kicks farmers off their land, replaces them with government workers, with sycophant communists. Millions starve to death. Venezuela, right over here on in our side of the world. Venezuela, the Venezuelan government takes over food production. People are starving. They kill and eat all the zoo animals. They're killing freaking, pe not pelicans, flamingos. They're eating flamingos because the government took over the food production. Government takes over food production, people starve. It always happens. Now, one of the good things, one of the positive notes that came out of the discussion uh, between Michael Yan and Court Graham uh, is he talks about there have been famines and there have been situations where certain communities or prefects or counties or whatever were relatively unaffected. And the reason that they were unaffected is because the people of those counties, those communities, those prefects, whether it's, you know, Japan or Thailand or wherever, that they actually listened and they prepared as a community, as a county. They prepared, and they were relatively unaffected by it. So what I'm telling you is that you can be that county. You can be part of that community, but it's going to take effort. And any activity that does not lead towards preparedness and self-sufficiency in your community, your neighborhood, your county, any activity that you're taking that does not lead to that, is a waste of your time. Now you say, well, I've got to go to work. Okay, maybe the money that you're making, that you're putting some of that money into preparedness. Maybe the activity, the time that you're spending, instead of spending time focusing on garbage like sports ball and these distractions, maybe you could use that time and energy to talk to your actual neighbors. This goes back to what we talked about earlier about honoring our ancestors. You know, there was a point in the world where 
there wasn't centralized food production there people didn't go rely on going to the store to get their necessities for food now they had community like trade markets and, and farmers markets and whatnot uh, where the community traded with each other but humans were able to survive when food didn't come from a few centralized farms so it's possible to do so the information on how to do so is out there um, and it's easier to get now than it ever has been before you don't have to come from a farm family to be able to acquire the knowledge to be able to grow your own food and produce your own animals uh, meat cattle uh, goats all that stuff you don't have to come from that kind of family anymore to to have the knowledge which is is amazing that we're in a predicament or a uh, not a predicament but we're at a point in humanity where you can learn things from people that are in other countries and then you can put that into actual like you can put it into play in your own life and actually but, use it but here's the trick you have to learn how to do that before your kids are starving yeah and there's pl plenty of books out there uh, I would give yourself a year, at least a year with the garden before you really figure out what, what's going to grow in your garden. I don't know these people, but my mom does. And she says that they're good people and that they're worth listening to. And so what I just did is I dropped a link. It's called Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. Uh, this dude looks like he's Amish. He's actually not Amish. He, he was a dude that was a city guy. He was a professional, lived in the city. And he said, you know what? This is crap. I'm not going to live the rest of my life like this. I'm not going to be a drone, you know, commuting an hour and a half each way. He's not going to do it. So he decided to get off grid and become self-sufficient. So he's got a ton of videos and how to's and helpful stuff. Uh, like I said, my mom actually knows this guy and his wife uh, and, and trusts them. So um, if nothing else, go take a look. But I'm telling you, bad things are coming. And it does. And the sad thing is, it doesn't matter. I mean, it kind of does. Uh, I guess what happens this week uh, in the election is going to determine how quickly disaster comes to America. Uh, the, you know, they, they keep saying that the canary in the coal mine. Do you guys under, even, Jared, what, or Zach, I'm going to ask Zach. What does the term canary in a coal mine mean? They used to take the canaries down into the coal mine, detect if there was a gas leak, if the canary died, then they knew they needed to get out. Yes, thank you. Did you know that also? Yes. Okay, so the canary was the sacrificial lamb. That was that was your hint. When the, when the canary died, you're like, oh, we're running out of breathable oxygen. Get out of the mine. And uh, You can't tell me what to do. That's right, you can't tell me what to do. But uh, in Europe... Essentially, what they're saying is like if you watch Germany and you watch what's happening to these other countries, that is the canary. That is the warning. That is the example that you need to be paying attention to. So you can either spend your time, you can waste your time and your mental energy on garbage and nonsense uh, like sports ball or what's going on with Twitter or whatever. I don't give a crap on what's going on with Twitter. It's 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 nonsense. It's distraction. Or you can spend your time preparing your family. And you can spend your time getting to know your neighbors. And you don't you cannot wait until your kids are hungry to plant a garden. That's not how that works. And holy crap, we've been saying this and for the, years now. The thing is that there is no downside to self sufficiency. No, there's Even no downside. If you to learn it. how to do this and you start doing it. And there is no famine. There is nothing that happens that's horrible. Everything's you great. are. Yeah, everything is great. And you're still better off. You yeah. still have way better knowledge. And you will have a better life. Yes. And you're be rewarded for the work physically and chemically. Your brain releases chemicals that make you happy when you do things like when this. you produce. So you're not only making yourself physically better. You're making yourself mentally better as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. All right. This week on Student of the Gun University podcast, we're going to, when it's number four of the four pillars of combat, and it is gear. It is gear. So if you're not listening to Student of the Gun University podcast, it is a single topic, short form, easy to digest, weekly show that you should be listening to and sharing 
and giving us a thumbs up or a star or a heart or a smiley face or whatever it is. You can listen to it on the platform that you're listening to us right now at this moment. Right meow. And if you want to get links to everywhere else, if you're maybe listening to this live, but you don't have a podcast platform installed on your phone, just go to SOTGU.com. Step number one, sign up for the notifications so that we can let you know when the new stuff is rolled out, which will be very soon. And step number two is scroll down to the show and you can get links there to support the show, but also download any uh, any apps that you need. Okay. So cat in the hat and that be that, prepare your family. The time to start doing that is absolutely right now. Yes, right now. All right, tomorrow, courage is contagious, but so is cowardice. We got a leadership lesson for you guys. And uh, we're going to talk about Rush Limbaugh's undeniable truths, the 35 undeniable truths. And uh, we're also going to have a fighting fitness for you. We're going to have fighting fitness for you. That's going to be tomorrow. If you'd like to join us as a member of the Student of the Gun grad program, get the really cool behind-the-scenes insider stuff, how can they do that, Jared? Get SOTG.com. That's right. Go to GETSOTG.com. Sign up today. Don't miss a minute. All right, that's just, this is when I tell you, you're a beginner once, you're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.